Kiss me, Tyler. Kiss me. We're going to be talking about a new Vinegar Syndrome release, which is Girl School Screamers, which was released in 1986. And, well, it, let me just say, prefix this by saying it was produced by Trauma, or released by them anyway. So it has that kind of low budget feeling to it, where they're, they're trying really hard, not quite working. But this movie is entertaining. I had a lot of fun with girls' school screamers. Hi guys, what's new? It's all about seven students from a local Catholic school that have been chosen because they're the best of their year to go and inventory this large mansion, a mansion that's been left to the Catholic school. They're going to sell it off and all its belongings including all the artwork inside which is the what the girls are there to inventory i kind of like this because it's a fun and interesting way to take a group of people and put them in a location where they're ultimately going to be slaughtered but it's a nice uh, way of getting them there of course one of our main characters just happens to look a lot like a girl who died there several times decades prior there's a supernatural element to this and it's just a kind of fun throwaway horror movie now this is one of those movies that i'm going to struggle to really recommend even though i kind of enjoyed it i liked a lot about girls school screamers to be honest i like the fact that they're really trying They've created a really wonderful story at the heart of this one. May not be the most original, but it's kind of tight in the way that they're telling it. I like the additions of characters. I like the way it moves along. We're getting constant information, even though it's all through exposition and completely random exposition at that. He invited Jennifer to spend the summer with him at this very estate when a terrible accident occurred. It does keep the story kind of propulsive and moving forward and we have a mystery at the heart of it. What happened to Jennifer, uh, the, the character that died decades prior, um, what was her fate, what happened to her, that kind of mystery. Although you kind of can guess fairly early on what's going to happen. And I kind of liked the fact that all the girls had their own identities. I it felt like that. Now, some of the performances were way better than others, but I kind of enjoyed the ones that weren't that great as well. But can you believe it? A Trinity girl was killed here in this house. Who said anything about being killed? Yeah, and then she died accidentally from a fall. That's what everybody was told. But I think she was murdered. There is some fun moments in this low-budget horror movie that just need to be seen to be believed. I loved a lot of the acting in this one because it was over amateur dramatic type of kind where hands and head movements were all over the place. There's no restraint. There's no subtlety. They are just hitting their mark. Sometimes it feels like they're literally reading their lines off of cue cards. Sometimes it feels like they've memorised them to such a degree that it's almost mechanical in the way that they're reading them off. No harm done, Doctor. Doctor? Doctor Robert Fisher. I did, however, like some of the special effects, which is another aspect of the story which I suppose I should get to. It's an 85 minute long movie. We don't get the first kill in this movie until 50 minutes in. When it happens, it kind of hits you like a hatchet to the face. Because it's literally a hatchet to a face. But it's pretty cool and I like a lot of the effects in this. Some of them are a little bit ropey. Yeah, particularly there's a body that gets run over and it just looks like a mannequin that's lying there. But some of them are really kind of gnarly and fun and inventive and add a little bit of panache to the movie. 
but it does take a while in getting to that if that's what you're after. Still, I liked a lot of the characters and the way they interacted, the little cliques within the groups, the little infighting and the silly moments of it. Like I said, there's moments where they just kind of add an exposition for the sake of it. Like our lead character's boyfriend. He's alone for the weekend, what will he do? He'll talk to his father who he tells us that he's the editor of the local paper and that he should come down and research the house where she's staying so we can get some more information to push the story forward. I don't really mind that. It does feel completely um, out of the blue. But again, I'm kind of forgiving on a lot of this movie and bought, bought enough goodwill that I was willing to forgive a lot of it. And, well, you know what, it's just, it's a, a typical kind of movie. It's not great, it's not bad. The performances are completely varied, up and down, some of them great, some of them not. It's just how you kind of are willing to go with that. The way it's shot is decent enough, there's enough interest in the story to keep it driving forward. And I had fun with girl school screamers. Not the best that I've seen Vinegar Syndrome release, and I'm sure it's one that's going to have a lot of detractors as well, but I would watch it again. I did enjoy it, but it's like a two and a half out of five for me, right along the middle of just being average. There we go. Love to know your thoughts on Girls School Screamers, and there's other videos here that you can click on to if you want to check out more of my content, or if you're feeling super supportive, subscribe, or even like all adds to the magic YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.